So in my introduction of this little car as my project, I mentioned that I've got problems with my electrics being glitchy. You'll see is that light is on, the traction control lights, sorry, traction control light there is on, and also you'll notice when I play with the indicators that they don't work, or the lights, they don't work on the interior anyway. The exterior, they do work and had the previous owner had ordered a BCM and he was going to send it on to me. Well, I now have the BCM. And so what I'm hoping to do today is just quickly fit that and see if that sorts out my electrical issues. Now to do that, you have to remove this piece of plastic trim. I've actually removed it, removed it, but you can do it by just peeling it off to one side, but I wanted some good access so I can access the old BCM. Now, from what I understand, it should just be a case of 10 mil bolts, unclip, and then we're done, in theory. So what I'm gonna do is try and bring you in closer so you can see what I'm doing, and we'll see if we can get that unclipped, plug in the new BCM, and see if everything comes to life. This is gonna be where I find out I need a deep socket, and that, that's just enough to work there. Now, from what I've read online, I don't even need to worry about turning the battery off, so that's quite nice. Okay, so that's the two 10 mils off, one there and one just behind. Now, hopefully, we can just kind of pull this out somehow. Might have to lift the carpet a bit to get to some of this. That's the first one off. Uh -huh. Right, let's see, how do we push that down and then this pops out. Luckily, that's color coded that one down and that one also pops out that's, that's those two this bottom white one bottom white also appears to be the same and this main one, I don't know. I'm just really struggle busting here. All right, I got it out. About to fit up the new one. And I suddenly thought I'd best tell you how I got this one out. So this needs to slide away and in the end, screwdriver, straight in there, leave it out slowly. And then that will be able to pull that off. Now I've got to push that back on, put the new one in and see what happens. And ignition. Same lights as always, that's never a good sign. And I need to get my booster back out. And looks like I have the same problem. That's still on there. That light's still on there. No indicator on the right. Whereas you see, I've got indicators on the car flashing away. But it is not doing that on the inside, which means I have a problem and it's not the BCM. Oh, it's come alive. You see it comes off, it's intermittent. All right. All right, so BCM didn't work. And as you can see, things have escalated. There is a lot of stuff disconnected now and I'm going to walk you through some of my research and what happened. Now, my problem when I bought this car is the guy put it back together after being a track car for a little while, which means a lot of the wiring loom was exposed. And when he put things back together, he didn't just put in the stock parts. He also put in some different changes. So you'll notice I'm now back to the single clock setup with the main clocks in there. He also put in the HVAC system back again with the automated version. And what I wanted to do was isolate where the problems are. Now, I sat down and did some research and there are multiple buses in this generation of Mini. And the ones that deal with the internal clocks are all to do with the body control. And that is all done with this module called the body control module. 
Now, in our body control module, what happens is it sends out the right signals when it receives data saying something has switched. The way it does this is using what they call a K-bus. Now, a K-bus is a single wire that goes through all of the internal bits in the car. Now, this includes your optional extras, such as your sunroof, parking sensors, and whatever else have features have in your car. And that's all the optional extras are stored in your body control module. Now, what happens is the K body control module listens on the K-bus, which is a signal. So when you turn, say, like the indicators on, that sends a signal down to the K-bus through the steering wheel connection to the K-bus, sends it to the body control module. Body control module says, right, turn on the external indicators, and also sends it back another signal to the clocks here and says, turn on the clock. Uh, telltale saying the indicators are on. Same thing for the main beam flashes and all the rest of it. So what can happen is you can have the function working like I did with all the exterior lights all working, all the indicators, all the setups, the lights, the brake lights, all of that still functioning and the central locking turning on and off. However, it wasn't receiving the correct signal to then say turn on that information on the dash it. So, now that's what led, I think, the initial guy to buy the new BCM. However, because it's all communicated via one wire, which is this K-Bus setup, it could be that the K-Bus wasn't sending or receiving the signals and it's an intermittent. So what I did is I started to trace through this K-Bus wiring. Now on a BCM, there is one K-Bus connector here on pin 54 at white connector. There are two on the blue connector. Uh, I can't remember the pins, I think they're 18 and 43, but the, what they are is not that important. What I did was I found that these two connectors exist, I saw the wiring on the diagram, but there is no diagram in the service manual for where this wire routes through the car, which is a problem. So because of that, I had to strip a lot of things out to find the wiring. Now, I tried the classic trick of disconnecting fuses to see what brings things to life, nothing did which made me think then it's not a problem in one of the modules itself or one of the options, but in a wire to or from one of those modules along the K-Bus wiring rather than a fault in the wire itself. Sorry, rather than a fault in the module. But just to make sure, I did disconnect all the modules that were connected to the K-Bus lines and I started to work things forwards. This is hard because you don't necessarily know where this K-Bus line is in the car. And then I discovered a bit of a thought process. Well, I'm not as much discovered as in, I thought to myself, well, hang on a second. I can disconnect these sections here and find out which section of K-Bus wiring it is. Because according to the di uh, wiring diagrams, the blue section deals with wiring to the dash area and the white section deals with the wiring to the accessories or options. And that's on that two K bus kind of lines. Now, and then the meeting up is obviously in the actual unit itself. So what I did is I disconnected the accessories. And then that would mean all my external lights wouldn't work, but all the interior stuff should do. And so what happened when I disconnected that, I switched my indicators, the telltale would light up, but not anything on the exterior which led me to believe that some of the exterior wiring or some of the wires going to one of the accessories is at fault, which meant I'd ripped out this entire dash for nothing, a minor problem. We then sit down and think to ourselves, right, well, if it's off the, this pin 48, it's the final but one pin on this connector here, can I split the connector and start tracing it down? I can't. There's no way of really splitting this connector, the type that goes on here, at least that I've figured out without screwing things up. So what I did is I started to look through the car for a K-Bus wire that I could actually try and get a meter reading from. And I found one in my boot, so I'll show you that. In my boot here, there are options where you can have a 6ED changer, another amp, there's a few other different things. But one of the other things that can fit here is parking sensor wiring. Now, so I took apart this loom. This is an always live something. Don't know what that's for. We'll figure that out. 
That looks to be a stereo connector of some type. So I put that to one side. However, I found this badly set up of wires. What I noticed is this is the right color combination for the K-Bus wire. So I put a meter on this endpoint. I'm just gonna cover that so I don't short anyway. And I found that this wire here, the K-Bus wire, when connected to ground was showing five volts, which meant there is a short to ground in that wire. It also explains why I've had a bit of battery discharge issues. So knowing that there is a short in the K-Bus in the accessory circuit, I could look at the wiring diagram, and I know it comes from the white plug, so somewhere between the white plug on the BCM and this wire is a short to ground. Now that meant there's quite a few different things connected on that, all the accessories. There needed to be some kind of connection module where that one wire connects up to multiple others. And I did finally find that in the car, but it's not in a service manual. So what we have here is BCM has been pulled off from its mounting and I've followed the wires back and there's a whole load of wiring that runs along this side of the car. In there, you will actually find this type of connector block here. And in that connector block lives this junction block of wires. Now you'll notice they're all color coded for K-Bus. This, I believe, is the accessories connections for the K-Bus. There's probably another one of these somewhere underneath the dash that does the dash setup, but this looks to be the one for the accessories. And what I did is I disconnected every single one of these connections and checked for a, a connection to ground until I found one that was connecting to ground, which is this one here, because there is a convenient ground point here to test against. I can say this wire is connected to ground somewhere in the loom. Now, I plugged everything back in so I could confirm that that's the only problem. And now when I get in the car, I can actually use my indicators and lights and it shows the telltales inside. So now we're inside, we can turn the ignition on. I still have issues with my traction control lights. I also, in the process, disconnected an ABS sensor, which is rather annoying. But I now have indicators, the clicky light, and if I turn on my lights and disconnect the key, I have the key, um, key chime or lights chime. So all of that is now working successfully. Now, all of this takes like a few seconds to talk you through, but for me, it's actually been two and a half days to get to this point. There's been a lot of fault finding and I have managed to find it with the multimeter. Yes, I went through every single one of the fuses in that side panel there. Yes, my entire dash got ripped apart tracing a BCM wire connection. I didn't need to worry about, but I didn't know that at the time. I'm gonna suggest if you're fault finding issues on these minis and you have intermittent lights inside, first place to start is the BCM but simply play around with the plugs to see what's going from. Do check them because apparently they do rot with rain if you get rotor ingress, but then go straight to the junction modules and just start unplugging things. If I'd have done that to begin with, I wouldn't have had to rip anything out of the car except for this one side panel. And I would have been able to kind of diagnose my problem within five minutes. I wouldn't have had to wait for a second BCM. I wouldn't have just stripped everything out of this car but I have learned a lot about how the BCM works, how the K-Bus works in this car, how the accessories and options work. So that's a good thing for me to know now, but if you are chasing electrical gremlins where lights aren't showing correctly here, and you think it's K-Bus related, BCM is the first port of call, it's an easy one to check, then straight down to this wiring junction box down at the bottom here. Now I've got to clean all this up and put it back together and then I can start moving on for the next project. But this was an awful amount of work. I can see why garages would charge an arm and a leg because the location of these junctions aren't in the service menu. You can see them on the wiring diagram so you know they've got to be somewhere in the car. But where in the car is the problem? Because it could just have easily not been underneath here, uh, the sill here. It could have been stuck right up in the dash somewhere. And that would have been really hard for me to find without ripping stuff out. 
And that's what a lot of this was. It was just trying to find things to get the right thing. Finding a short to grounds and testing voltage. As soon as you know it's on the K bus, you know the voltage should be 12 volts. If it's less than 12 volts, you know you've got a problem. Then you've got a case of finding the short, which wire is in. It's all easily traceable, but it's getting to these junctions to know what you're looking for. But that's it for now. I've got a back to functioning mini. I've still got two problems. One, the airbag that I've created, and two, the traction control showing up as issues. And of course, this entire dash has to go back together somehow. So that I'm probably going to do off camera because no one wants to see me rip apart or put back more of the dash. This was a lot of work and a lot of swearing to get this far. But I am happy that at least I fixed the problem and I can move on to the next thing with trying to get this car back up and running, which I think is going to be, I don't know what, I'm just going to pick something and start fixing it. Probably the stereo because that might be easy. All right, if anyone else has any questions about the BCMs and K buses, I'm probably going to write up a post and put it on the, one of the Facebook groups for R53s because there's a lot of information out there, but it's all a bit disjointed. And I think understanding how to fault find this from the comfort of your own home is really important. Because say garages would, if they spent eight hours, it's almost a grand in cash if they're doing £100 an hour, which most garages down my way already are. And if they get really stuck, they're not a specialist and don't know where to hunt for things straight away, it could be two days worth of fault finding and you're already two grand in the hole for no car that's really worth it. But for me, this is worth it. I'm really pleased. And uh, they've got a lot of tidying up to do. All right. Thanks very much. Cheers.